Hello friends, this is Reverend David from Christian Path Ministries of Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Christian Path. I hope you're well, and that today's message, Sin Equals Death Part 2, will complete the picture for us of how sin really does affect our lives, both physically while we're here on this physical realm in the material world, all the way especially into our spiritual lives, our eternity, what governs whether we're of the Lord, please Him, walk in His paths to get into His kingdom. As you know, the Bible is how we actually structure this ministry. That's what the ministry is all about. We actually use the Bible itself as a how-to manual for being human. And if you've never heard that before, think about it. We learn from the mistakes of others relate those things into our own lives so that we can be better Christians, walk in the Lord's footsteps, stay on the Christian path, and one day get into God's kingdom. Now, if you heard Sin Equals Death Part 1, you'll remember how we discussed what sin is, where it originated, and who is really behind it, and especially how crucial it is to us as God's children to defeat it. We know that sin is not a small thing, but it's major to the Lord. The Lord is sinless, and we as his children have to be the same way. And we also know that it's not easy. We know that Satan is the culprit behind all types of sins, from lust and greed to selfishness, sexual immorality, idolatry, every possible sin that you could think of. Our enemy is behind. He's masterminding all of them against us, to use against us, to keep us away from the Lord. We know that sin equals death, because to intentionally sin, and not care if we do it or not, separates us from the Lord. And to die in our sins means that we lose our eternity. To overcome sin in our world here on our own, would be completely impossible. We know this because of our own human nature, the influences of other people, and of course the enemy himself, Satan and his demons who were constantly at us to try to get us to be worldly and to be sinners. We also know that we were slaves of sin and sin equals death and the only redemption we have from it is from the death of Lord Jesus himself. He came here in human form to die for our sins and to free us from the slavery of sin so that we can live. Now have a look at Romans 6 verses 1 through 11 where the Apostle Paul says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died in sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Certainly, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. 
knowing that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ has been raised from the dead, he dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now let's jump ahead to verses 20 through 23, where Paul says, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, what exactly is Paul saying here with all this? He was writing this letter to the Romans, but what was he saying? What was he telling them? He was saying that the Romans, like us, today's Christians, not only does sin equal death to them back then, but to us also, but when the Lord Jesus took on all of the sins of the world, he died for them, he not only overcame sin, and freed us from the slavery of it, but he also overcame death, because sin equals death. So the Lord Jesus overcame both for us, so that when we're baptized, we died with him, we're resurrected with him, meaning that through Jesus, we too have overcome sin and death. Now that's pretty exciting when you think about it, that we have overcome sin and and we've overcome death only because Lord Jesus, our Savior, has done it for us. So when he actually was killed, we died with him. When we're baptized, we're dying and we're being resurrected when we come back up out of the water, just like the Lord was resurrected by God the Father after three days. We're no longer slaves of sin. But we're slaves of righteousness and of God, and the gift and reward from the Lord for this is everlasting life with him in his kingdom. That is our ultimate goal. Now think about this. If you're given a choice, if somebody says to you, what would you choose? Do you want life or do you want death? In any scenario, even here in the physical realm, if somebody puts a gun to you or they put a knife to your throat and say, okay, I'm going to give you a choice here. Do you want to live or do you want to die? <laughs> what are you going to choose? Are you going to say, ah, go ahead and kill me. I'll choose death. Of course not. You're going to be frightened for your life. You will cling to life. If they say, give me your wallet, your watch, give me everything you own, if they tell you to put your both thumbs in your mouth and do a jig, you will do it if you think it will spare your life. That's how much, even in human form, we cling to life. Now, in spiritual form, why wouldn't we do the same thing? Why would we choose death over life? We wouldn't. In human form or spiritual form, we are always going to give preference to life. We're always going to choose life over death. Before the Lord came to die for our sins, we didn't have that choice. We were doomed to die because of what our very first parents did, Adam and Eve. They are the ones that condemned us to death. Lord Jesus came back here to redeem us to life. And this is all based around sin. So we see how serious sin really is. It's not to be taken lightly. Just like we were talking about in Sin Equals Death Part 1, people tend to take it lightly. They say, well, sin is sin, and oh yeah, I'm a sinner, and we're all sinners. They don't really think much of it. They don't give much importance to it. But when you really think about it, 
sin is very important to the Lord because sin equals death, righteousness equals life. And what are we going to choose? What do we want? Do we want life or death? We already know the answer to that. Through the entire scriptures, Old and New Testaments, the Lord tells us that we have to be perfect. Now, in the Gospels, the Lord Jesus says, you need to be perfect like we are perfect, like your Father in Heaven is perfect. What does that mean? It means we have to be free of sin. How do we do that? Think about it. Take a look around. Just see the world we live in. Notice what's going on. Let's face it. This world is anything but free of sin. Are we living in the Garden of Eden here? No. Are we living in paradise? Is everyone loving and sin-free? Just the opposite. Let's face it facts here. The world is corrupt, perverse. People are doing what's right in their own eyes, not what's right in the eyes of the Lord. They're not following the laws of the Lord. They don't even know what the Ten Commandments are a lot of times. Just look around. Watch the news. Corruption is in every place you look for murders, embezzlement, scams, robberies, rapes. You name it, it's going on. When you really think about it, Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have anything on us now. With how evil and perverse Sodom and Gomorrah was, they were completely drenched with sin. And what did the Lord do to them? He sent two angels to destroy those two cities. They were that bad. Now, how much worse were they than we are now? So we see even back then in ancient biblical times, their sin caused their deaths because they were destroyed. The Lord sent angels to do it. What about in Noah's time? Why did the Lord destroy the entire earth with a flood? Because sin was so rampant. Noah was the only one that found any kind of favor in the Lord's eyes. So he was allowed to bring his wife, his sons, the sons' wives, and of course a sample of all the animals. But why did the Lord destroy the earth with the flood in Noah's time because of sin so look sin caused the death and the destruction of the entire world back then now how can we still being human being completely sinless how can we do it can we be sinless being human and flawed we're not perfect we know that the Lord knows that can we say that we are completely sinless any of us no not at all can we say that even after we would repent of our sins that we'll never sin again no we know that's not true either it's impossible even when we repent of our sins and we're really fervent we mean it we tell the Lord we're sorry does this mean we're never going to sin again <laughs> no we know differently since the beginning of mankind Adam and Eve right up to this day sin exists and it always will as far as we can see now at one time in the distant future after the Lord comes back and after the Millennium sin will not exist because the culprit of it Satan himself will be locked in somewhere where he cannot do us or anyone else any harm he'll be in the fiery pit let's face it we are literally slaves to sin here in humanity it governs us it controls us ultimately it will control what happens to us in eternity we know that sin means death so how can we escape it how can we escape sin so we can escape death how can we defeat it think about it the only way and we know this as Christians that we can ultimately defeat sin and death is to follow in the footsteps of Lord Jesus in 1 Peter 4 verses 1 and 2 have a look at that Peter says therefore since Christ suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves also with the same mind for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. Think about it. When Jesus was here, one of his most important goals was to make all of us free. 
to take all of the sins of the world from the very first sins committed from Adam and Eve all the way to the very last sin the very last man in existence hasn't even committed yet in the distant future he took all of them onto his shoulders and he died for them which means we also have to be sinless he died for all of the sins of the world his blood paid for that and we know that this is the only redemption we have through Lord Jesus. We also know that when we're baptized, we die with him, we are resurrected with him, and we will be sinless with him and God the Father, and we will live with them in the kingdom. We have to be just like them. We are slaves of righteousness now. We're no longer slaves of sin. All through the Bible, we see what happens as a result of sin, we see how in the Gospels, Lord Jesus came here to die so we can live forever. He overcame death. He actually physically died and he overcame death and he took sin with him because all of the sins were on his shoulders. So sin died with him. He overcame it for us. Think of this. Remember in Genesis when the children of Israel were enslaved in Egypt the Lord sent Moses to free them while we here in the 21st century and all the time before were also enslaved we're enslaved by sin God the Father sent Lord Jesus to free us from our slavery just like Moses was sent to free the children of Israel so sometimes do you see how things repeat themselves but it worked. Moses did free them from Egypt. And what Lord Jesus did was even more crucial and more important. Because think about this. What Moses did was physical. He physically got the children of Israel out of their slavery, out of Egypt. But Lord Jesus came here physically to free us from our slavery, from sin and death, which goes into our spiritual lives and our eternities. We know that sin separates us from the Lord. That's a given. We know this. We also know that he cannot stand sin. And if we love sinning, if we revel in it, and some people do, they just, they know what they're doing is a sin. They don't care. They enjoy it. If they're sleeping with an extra neighbor's wife, or they're stealing, or they're backbiting, or they're gossiping, or they're selfish, they're self-centered, whatever they're doing, they know that they're sinning. They're quite aware of it, but they don't care. They don't even know what the Ten Commandments are, so they're certainly not going to follow them. They are on the wrong side of the tracks. Whose side are they on? Think about it. The Lord is on one side where we want to be with righteousness, no sin, and life. On the other side, you have the enemy. You have Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, with sin and evil and death. Now, what side of the tracks do we want to be on here? Sadly, most of the world is on the enemy's side. They give in to worldly things. They sin. They don't care. Even if they're not aware that they're sinning, if you told them, they don't want to hear it anyway. They're on the enemy's side. They're of pleasures of the flesh. Physical is everything to them. They're not even thinking about, hey, you know what? One day, I'm not going to be physical anymore. I'm going to be spiritual. And what happens? Where is my spiritual, spiritual life going to take me? Is it going to take me to the kingdom where I can live? Or is it going to take me down to the pit where I die? They're not even thinking about it. They're just living for today. That is what is so unbelievable to me. I just can't fathom the fact that people think this. This is the mindset. This is the mentality that most of the world has got. And we know this for sure just by looking around to see what's going on and what kind of world we live in. And we know who is doing it. We know who's behind it. He is the ultimate master of lies, deceit, and he is behind sin. Now think about this. 
Father sent Lord Jesus here not only to show us how to be human, how to act, what to do, how to live as human, give us an example to follow in his footsteps so we know he laid the foundations of how to be human, how to handle every kind of sin, how to resist it, how to be righteous as a human, which we know is not easy, how to defeat sin and ultimately defeat death like the Lord himself did. He also took all of sins onto his shoulders and he died for them. He took our sins, sins that we haven't even committed yet. We have been bought at a price. The Lord bought us with his blood. We know that we can't live with the Lord if we're living in sin. So what do we do? Does this mean because the Lord died for sin, that he overcame death, that he overcame sin, that sin itself is dead too? No, we know it's far from it. As long as Satan exists, so will sin. Let's face it, we know he's never going to let up. He will never stop his attack against us to get us to constantly sin, turn our backs on the Lord, deceive us, do anything in his power to separate us from our Father and our older brother and Savior, Lord Jesus. And why? Think about it. Why is he on such a mission to make sure that humanity continues to sin so that they will die, that death is their fate? Why would Satan care? Why is he even doing this? Because he hates us. He hates us because we are God's children. He knows what his fate is going to be, so he wants to take as many of the Lord's children with him as he can. We can see just by looking around that Satan is on a war path. Sin, oh no, no, sin is very much alive. We know this. That's a fact. Problem is, Satan is also very much alive, and he's the one giving it all of the fuel. He is the one that's behind all of it, making a mass attack with his legions against humanity, and we are aware of it. Part of the problem of a lot of the world is they're not aware of it. And if they are, they don't want to hear it. You can preach to someone if you want. I could preach until I'm blue in the face, but if somebody does not want to listen, they're not going to hear me. It falls on deaf ears. They don't want to hear it. They just will walk the other way. It's like, no, 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 religious stuff, holy roller. <laughs> they don't want to hear it. I've been through that. I don't preach to anyone who does not want to hear it, who isn't interested. You can't cram it down someone's throat. And you know what? Why should I have to? I'm not going to. The Lord gives us so much. I don't need to force that on anyone, nor would the Lord want anyone to force it on anyone who doesn't want to hear it. Some people would say, trying to be sinless, trying to be righteous in this world, it's a lost cause. It's hopeless. Why even bother? But you know what? It's not because of Lord Jesus. He's the only reason that we can win. The only reason that we can defeat the enemy and live for eternity in God's kingdom. As we go through our human lives, we know it's a learning experience. We're constantly growing. We're growing in character and in spirit. We know that because the Lord died for our sins, we can live. But he did leave these footsteps for us to follow in. He left the Christian path for us to be on. But he didn't say it was going to be easy. Didn't Lord Jesus say himself in Luke 9.23, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me? What did he mean by that? It meant abandoning your sins, making God and the Lord Jesus and the kingdom your priority over anything and everything in this physical material world. Following the Lord's laws, following his commandments, recognizing what sin is, when we're sinning, avoiding it, and of course we know we're going to sin, but repenting of it when we do. When the Lord died for sins, he didn't take sins with him as far as sins died. He actually redeemed us so we can have forgiveness of the sins that we commit. But we can't continue to 
intentionally commit sin saying, oh, well, I'm going to do this because I'll repent of it later. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work that way. You intentionally do something you know is wrong, something you know is a sin, because you can just say, well, I'll repent of it later and I'll be forgiven. That's defeating the whole purpose. That is not what the Lord has in mind with that. We will sin inadvertently. We can't help it. When that happens, that is when we have to repent and we are forgiven for what we've done. Now, if you haven't already, remember we mentioned earlier about baptism, and we saw right there in scriptures that when we're baptized, we go under the water. I don't mean being sprinkled with a little bit of water on your forehead. That's a christening. That's something totally different. You might want to hear the message I did on baptism to see the difference between baptism and christening. But in a baptism, you are fully submerged, so you spiritually, symbolically die as the Lord did. We died with him. When you come back up out of the water, you are resurrected just like God the Father resurrected Lord Jesus. And then we are on the Christian path. We have defeated sin through Lord Jesus. We can't do it on our own. And we have defeated death because by following in the Lord's footsteps, by staying on the Christian path, keeping our prayer lines open, avoiding sin, repenting of it when we do, we know that we will inherit eternal life. And think about this. We know it's not an easy path to be on. The Lord never said it would be. But we're not alone. We have the Lord himself. We have the Holy Spirit, the helper that he promised he would send us when we're baptized and we repent of our sins. We have each other. We have the Bible. And if you need me for anything, don't hesitate to contact me. My website is www.mychristianpath.net. www.mychristianpath.net. All my contact information is there. And all of the messages that I've done so far, including this one, are also there. You can listen to them right from the site or download them. Or if you'd like a CD or DVD of any of them, just let me know and I'd be happy to send you any one you'd like free of charge. That's not a problem. But remember, you have to repent, be baptized, and come up out of the water, accept Lord Jesus as your Savior, and we then... We're on the Christian path. We're walking in the footsteps of Lord Jesus. Follow the commandments. Follow the God's laws. Keep your prayer lines open. Avoid sin at any cost. Because now we know that sin isn't just something to be taken lightly. Sin is a major thing that we need to avoid. And we need to repent of if we do it. Because, let's face it. One side and the other side. Life death. Sin equals death. Righteousness equals life. Which do we choose? We want life. We want to be with the Lord. This life that we have here on this earth will end. We are interested in our spiritual lives, in the kingdom. So remember, as we go down the Christian path, as we stay on the Lord's footsteps, keep your Bible glued to your side, read scriptures every single day, Keep your prayer lines open, keep your faith strong, and always keep your mind set on what will be a sin, what wouldn't be. We're going to avoid sin in any way we can, and when we do sin inadvertently, repent of it. So repent, be baptized, get on the Christian path, accept the Lord as your Savior, and we have defeated sin, and we have defeated death through Lord Jesus, our Savior. Until next time, I'm Reverend David. Thank you for joining me for The Christian Path. Goodbye, friends.